What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video we'll talk about on-demand TLS, which is a new feature by Caddy. It's a web server and it's an awesome full of features. This web server is badass, really. And uh, before I talk about the on-demand TLS, I'd like to talk about three topics. First of all, obviously, for some of you who don't know what TLS is, I'm going to talk about a little bit of a what is TLS, right? I'm going to talk about how to actually obtain a TLS certificate today, right? And how, how it become easier and easier these days. And finally, I'm going to talk about this new feature on Caddy called On Demand TLS, which is, I never heard about this. This is the first time I heard it. I, I think the, they pioneered this concept, right? This this web server is actually, it's, it's very interesting. And it's also at the same time really scary, it has a lot of features, so much features it, that it. I, I'm not sure it really has been battle tested or not yet, right? Because it has so much feature, but I don't know if actually people are using it in production or not. Let me know if actually CAD is being used in production or not. I'll be, I'll be really, I'm just really interested to know if it's used in production because there's like a lot of features being shipped in this product. But I'm don't I don't see I don't see actually companies using it. So it's not battle tested. So I don't know if this actually will succeed <laughs> if you actually spin it up in a in a production environment and come all these requests came and what will happen, right? I might be wrong though. Alright, so let's talk about TLS. TLS, I made a video about TLS, transport layer security, go check it out. But in a nutshell, if I have a client here, browser or any application that want to establish a, a TCP connection or a communication between a server, right? And I want to send information back and forth between the, the client and the server. By default, when you send information over TCP, right? The information is plain text, they are not encrypted, right? And that's bad because in the internet, when you, when you pan this to the internet, all this traffic is going through different routers, different machines, so Literally anybody can s uh, sniff the content and see what you're actually sending. That's bad. So we need to encrypt it. People came up with a lot of algorithms to encrypt these things. The best one is, so far, Diffie-Hellman and AES, I believe. I might be wrong. But the idea is these two entities should agree on the same key. The same key should encrypt and the same key should decrypt. And the same idea was like, oh, if it's the same key, Hussein, how do you send, who's generating the key first and how do you send it? Because the moment you send the key across, people can sniff the key and they will read your information even if it's encrypted. So they came up with Diffie Hellman, which is kind of a partial assembling Lego blocks of the key itself. So the server will come up with the part of the key, the client will become part of the key, and they will send up the other parts and they can figure out how to actually assemble the key back without actually anyone in the middle knowing how to do that. That's TLS. So once they establish the symmetric key, they can actually encrypt the beautiful stuff between them and nobody can, nobody, <laughs> nobody can actually sniff in the middle. I, I added double code because there are some attacks that still uh, allow people to crack this thing, at least in the TLS 1.2. 1.3, eh, still it's just secure until this day. My chain though. All right, so that's TLS, right? How do you do TLS? TLS, especially let's come back to a web server, right? Not just any server. Now you can come up with any web server in general. The web server have the concept of certificate. The certificate not only gives you it's part of the key, it will also tell you whether this server is what, who it claims it is, right? So if you connect to a Google server, it replies with a certificate and this certificate is signed with a third party certificate authority that tells you, yep, this is actually Google. And we can prove it because we locked it up with our key and we can prove that it's actually, this is them. So you can trust it. That's why you always have to go. When you go to our website, click on the padlock and see who issued this certificate and whom it is issued to. Is that right? Whom? Is that, is that the correct use of the word? Whom it is used to? Yeah. It's the object, yeah. Yeah, so that's the certificate. And to generate a web server certificate, 
for the longest time, we had to pay a lot of buck of money, buttload of money, for these certificate authorities, like very signs and, and whatever, digital signs and all that stuff. And you pay the money, and they will give you a one year certificate. I don't know, you pay them $200. And they will essentially give you a certificate proving that you own this web server, assuming that domain name, you have a DNS entry and all that stuff. Once you have that, they will give you a certificate. You put the certificate in the server and you can start initiating TLS and all that jazz. So that's how you obtain certificates. Let's Encrypt, which is a certificate authority, does it for free, which is awesome. It uses a protocol called Acme, I believe. And what it does is like as a web server, you can spin up a web server and then you can download their tool called CertBot. And they say, oh, CertBot, I own this domain, which is www.hosseinnasr.com. And that domain entry points to my IP address, right? So they know that. So what they do when you do CertBot and you give them the domain and you want a certificate. So what they do is they spin up a web server on port 80 just on a temporary web server on port on your machine on port 80 and they started communicating from let's encrypt to your web server and they put stuff files on your uh, on your machine and they confirmed that actually they connect to hussein.com and see oh th yes you own this domain because i just put a file and i was able to access the file from the third party so you own the domain so i trust you i believe you you own the domain here's a certificate it gives you a private key and it gives you a public key, usually a PEM file. And then you, that's your, that's your certificate, becomes your certificate. And, and that takes finite amount of time. And usually you have to do it when you have a domain assigned to you. If you, have, you don't have a domain, tough luck, right? How do, you, how do I trust you? And that's a lot of cases where you don't own the DNS entry, right? So it's like you submit for a DNS, but... It takes time and you need those web servers spin up right now and you have everything. The code is ready. You just spin it up and you need to leave. Uh, you need to leave your work and yeah, so you cannot do anything. So you even if you submit the web server, you still have to generate the certificate. So what do you do if the DNS entry is, is still not ready and you want to generate the web cert the certificate, right? And imagine you own like 10 web, uh, domain entries that point to the same IP address through SNI, server name indication, another topic we discussed here. Check it out. So yeah, what do you do? Do you sit down and then assert but, uh, but uh, generate uh, site1.com uh, and then put the certificate and then you can search bar two ugh, and you do search bar three. So but you can do all this stuff, but you have to have all these entries actually live and ready and pointing to your IP addresses. So Caddy came in here with this beautiful feature called on-demand TLS. And they said, don't worry, we're going to invent something called on-demand TLS. I was like, what is that? I wonder, I read about it. I was like, what? So here it goes. Caddy, by the way, if you don't know, communicate with let's encrypt without you having to actually do that code for you so if you do caddy and you own a dns entry you do caddy dns just like that it will essentially on runtime when it spins up it will obtain the certificate for you for the first time and that's it it will do the work for you which is beautiful so you don't have to do this manual cert bot uh, thing right so that's but that's by itself and i talk about caddy check it out here Caddy does that for you, right? Spin up a web server and then we'll spin up the certificate and we'll, we'll have an HTTPS and all that jazz and beautiful stuff. Cool, right? But it's the same problem. What if your domain is not ready? Here's what they did. And 2.0, Caddy 2.0. They said, when you spin up the web go ahead and spin up the web server and give us the domain. It's okay if the domain is not ready yet. I'm going to leave the server running. So technically, if I go now and I go to HusseinNasr.com, that points to Caddy, I'm going to get an error because HusseinNasr.com still doesn't point to the IP address because the DNS entry is not ready. But I can leave home. I can leave the web server running. 
And after two hours or three hours when the DNS entry actually comes live, go and open the browser and literally just visit HosseinNazar.com on, on your browser. What does that do if if we we talked about that, right? You could check out the what happens when you type in Google.com and hit enter. I, I talked about this for an hour because <laughs> there's so much details. You open a port on port 80, yes, assuming you you're not in the HSTS list. You open a port on t- port 80, right? That the act of establishing a TCP connection with a caddy, right, on port 80 will flip it and says, okay, I need to communicate with HTTPS. Assuming you, by the way, you enabled on demand TLS on caddy. I forgot to mention that. Once you enable that on and this is running, the first TCP connection establishment. And guys, if, if anyone from the caddy team are watching this, correct me if I said anything that is not entirely correct, right? So once you establish the TCP connection, t- caddy will detect, oh, I am, by the way, on demand TLS. And now the, the uh, entry is now live. The DNS entry is live. So I can communicate with the server. So caddy will, will wake up and say, whoa, wait a second. I just received a TCP connection. I'm configured. I'm supposed to be configured on demand TLS. That first request will trigger a lazy loading mechanism to obtain the certificate for you. So that request will wait. That initial request will be a slow. And that will generate the t- uh, certificate in the back end, asynchronously, obviously. And then once it, it gives back the results, right? Now, I don't, I'm not sure what happens. Will that request be blocked? Are you going to get served HTTP traffic, encrypted traffic? Or are you going to serve HTTP traffic on the back end, uh, the, the asynchronously, the TLS certificate is being generated? And once it's ready, uh, obviously the HTTP, caddy is configured to always use HTTPS, so it will redirect you to HTTPS. Hopefully it will set the HSTS list, right? So by default, that Europe set becomes a part of the HSTS and always communicate with HTTPS in the future. And once that happens, communicate, and then you'll have a uh, you have a encrypted server just like that by the fact of just visiting the website. How awesome is this on demand errors? The problems with this is if you have tons of websites, tons, tons, tons of websites, especially those subdomains, right? Like it's like, okay, blog.hoseinnazo.com and mail.hoseinnazo.com and umbrella.hoseinnazo.com and mike.hoseinnazo and mac.hoseinnazo and then stevejobs.hoseinnazo.com and, and uh, phone.hoseinnazo. I'm making things up, but you get an idea. You have a lot of subdomains. That is actually slower than actually just obtaining a wild certificate, right? Wildcard certificate. It's just better for you to obtain a star.hoseinnazo.com certificate, which is one. And then forget about it. Instead of every site you're gonna visit is gonna is gonna because that that's processing at the back end, right? So you're take you're eating some processing memory at the back end, generating this certificate and, and all that stuff. Another thing I read is that uh, certificate in case of errors, like what what if, what happened if I gener- uh, encounter an error, right? They caddy will retry exponentially, like so. Uh, I think they're using the Fibonacci series, right? It's like, oh, one, two, two, three, whatever. And then we, they keep waiting exponentially, right? Every time it fails, they try again. Every time it fails, they don't try every minute because that, that will just kill the server, right? They try every certain amount of time, all right? So that's uh, another feature that I, t- I wanted to talk about. It's pretty cool. And uh, good. check out the Caddy web server. I, I made a video about it. It's Pretty cool. I need still to make a video about the Caddy 2.0 web server. It's a pretty cool technology. I still don't, I'm not sure if it will scale on the web actually battle tested, right? What will happen if it start battle tested? Will it an actual web server, an actual production live traffic? I don't know. I've never seen an actual data that tells me that what Caddy has been tested with the real traffic yet. Again, I might be wrong, right? If there is exist, let me know, guys. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. What should I talk about next? Let me know in the comment section below. Stay safe and stay awesome. Goodbye.